Hello and welcome to part three of the Jeep tutorial set that we're working on here for vehicle creation. When last I left you, we had uh, started the modeling process. We got the hood and the front fenders, the basic body, uh, the panels, and the rear area. So um, we're going to continue on with that. Uh, one thing I noticed right away uh, was this area right here. Excuse me, we need to fix that up. So let's go to our front view and make sure that that's all going to line up. We're going to grab that point there and drag that about probably maybe even a little further this way until it lines up on that edge there. And that's probably a little better. Yes, a little better. But it looks like we still have a little bit of a mess. Let's go to our let's go back to our top view and I think the issue lies right here on this guy. So if we move that over and then this guy, move that over, probably will look a little bit better. Okay. Um, one thing we can do to help smooth that out is to use some of our sculpting tools. Um, now, they're, they're, they can be used for a wide variety of sculpting things like ZBrush if you've played with that at all but uh, in this case I'm just going to use the smooth tool just to gum, come in here and just slightly brush that over that see if I can't get that smoothed out a little bit and what it's wanting to do if we tab into edit mode you can see it's just wanting to kind of get rid of that whole thing so let's bring that back down and maybe we can kind of just modify it until it looks a little better. Let's drag that whole thing there up. Go to our front view and maybe drag that over. Let's we'll add a loop right, right in here so we can get that rounded area there over. There we go. And that looks a little better. Okay, I think that'll be that'll be fine for now. Okay, so one thing I noticed in the front view, if we have, if we hit Z, so we're into wireframe view, is that the rear end uh, over the tires back here pretty well matches up with the edge of the fender in the front. So we can do one of two things right here since we see that it's not quite lined up. We can either move the edge of the fender over or we can go ahead and move that rear end in a little bit. So let's just do that. Let's move that in just a bit. Select all this. Then we'll go to our, actually don't select that one. Let's go to our front view and we'll just move that in until it's pretty well lined up on the side. So, now we can move this back a little bit. Okay, so now it should be lined up a little bit better. So, um, now, like I mentioned in the first one, in the part two, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the, the front grill. So go back to our wireframe view, and I'm gonna select the edge of the hood right there, and I'm gonna shift D, duplicate those vertexes, vertices, drag them down to where they're matching the top of the grill there. And I'm going to go ahead and drag them a little closer together. Since we have the mirror modifier turned on, we can just grab it and just drag it sideways and it'll make it a little narrower. So I'll just drag that there. And then I want to grab this edge here and let's go ahead and just outline the whole thing. I'm just going to go extrude that down to that corner right there. I'm going to extrude that down to the bottom. Well, not quite to the bottom. We got a little bit. Well, yeah, we just go all the way to the all the way to the the front bumper there, and then we'll go and extrude all the way to the middle on the x-axis there until it meets in the middle. All right. Now, one thing that we can do to make this a little easier to work on is to hide all the rest of the geometry so it's not in the way, so we don't accidentally grab it or move it or anything like that. It's pretty well set the way we want it now. So let's just get get it out of the way. So I'm just gonna. I hit the C button and scroll my mouse wheel up and down to change the influence. And I just mouse over and select some of the vertices from each one of those pieces. Control L, and you can see it selects all of them. It selects all the linked uh, vertices to that particular piece of mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the H button to hide it. Now that it didn't delete it, it just hit it. So if I tabbed out of edit mode, you can see it's still there. So it's just hidden right now. Okay. So let's go back to our front view and tell you what. I know pretty much what I'm going to be doing with uh, the grill right now. I'm wanting to kind of fill it in a little bit. So the background image is a little distracting at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the eyeball right there on the front right there. Hit the little eyeball and that will turn it off. It's still there. We can turn it on and off. But the eyeball means it's visible or not visible. So right now it's not visible. So that's good. 
Okay, so what I want to do is go ahead and start uh, kind of sewing this together. Um, let's go ahead and create an edge. Well, you know what? Before we do that, let's add uh, vertices for each one of the grill openings. So let's go ahead and turn that back on for now. And I'm going to add a vertex. Um, well, let's see. Let's go ahead and let's grab these two vertices here. I'm going to W subdivide those just so I have a vertex in the middle. I'm going to drag that over to the edge of where the the uh, openings start. and I'm going to grab that vertex and then the front, first vertex that starts around that curve. I'm going to go and do the same thing. Subdivide that so we just get a vertex right there. Drag that over till it's... Let's go ahead and drag both of those guys that we just created and hit the S button, X, and scale them on the X axis 0% so they're perfectly lined up and then we can drag that over until it gets to the edge there. And now I can go ahead and add a face in here. So I'm going to grab my edge select and I'm going to grab these two faces here and hit the F button. And since we're still in wireframe view, we can still see through it. So now, since we added that face on there, we can use the add loop tool, the control R, and we can come in here and just start adding loops around where these openings will be. Let's go ahead and add one on each side there. And, oops, click, there we go. All right, so now we have uh, a place to put all of our openings. So let's go ahead and add a loop around the tops, about like so, and then one down here at the bottom. And then we can grab these ones that start to curve back up. I guess this one on the end here drag it up and then uh, let's go back to our vertex select mode and now we can turn off the image because I pretty much know what I'm gonna be doing now I wanna fill in this area here so let's go ahead and add a loop right there I'm gonna go in S Y 0 S Z 0 sorry S Z 0 so we're scaling on the Z axis 0% go ahead and hit enter to lock that in and let's add let's grab these two guys W subdivide those so we get that extra vertex in there drag that down so we can start adding some faces in here grab the ed edge select tool now it's easier to, to just grab the edge select and grab opposite edges or you can just grab the vertex select and grab each four corners and hit the F it does this exact same thing I'm gonna go ahead and straighten that out SZ0 so it's nice and flat actually let's go ahead and drag both of those SZ0 there we go and let's grab this whole loop here, drag that up so it's nice and flat across here. Okay, so now it looks like I can kind of start bringing this in. Let's grab this guy here. I'm going to extrude that down straight down on the Z axis to about right there. Then I'm going to grab all these four corners, hit F, and then I can grab all of these four corners and hit F. So we're getting that filled in. Now, um, we can add a face right here, there we go, and if we subdivide right here, right there, just control R, we can add a face right here, and then finally a face right there. So we have nice four-sided polygons all throughout. So if we turn on our image again, we can see the places we need to delete. So I'm going to delete these guys here. Actually, before we do, let's, let's add one more loop in the middle of each one just so we can give it a nice well I don't say a nice curve but uh, a curve around it because it's not a straight flat square it's a curve so now we grab the corners of each one or actually just hmm, I guess we can just grab the vertices of those ones we just made drag those up just a bit and then maybe the bottom ones as well drag those down just a bit just so it's a curved area there so now we will grab the faces over the openings there just hold down shift and just click on all of those to select them and in the middle there's those and then we hit the delete button delete the faces and now we tab out go to solid view and rotate around you can see we now have the famous Jeep grill coming in. So looks like it needs a little bit of modification to be perfectly matched up. So let's grab this, actually just grab this edge here, move that a little forward or to the side. It looked like it was this opening was a little too wide compared to the others. 
So one thing we can do, so we can get them all the exact same width, like they should be, is we can add, let's tab out of edit mode, we're going to add, well, I'm in sculpt mode now, so I need to go back to object mode, there we go. I'm going to shift A, and I'm going to add what's called an empty, and it's basically a dummy object, just a placeholder. So I'm going to add a empty cube, and I added it uh, around the 3D cursor, it's basically like the the default cube, it's the same size that you start off with. But I'm going to scale it down, the S button, and we'll go back into wireframe view so we can see what we're doing there. And let's scale it down, and then maybe scale it up on the Z axis until it's roughly the size that it needs to be to fit those openings there. So let's drag that. You no, know, the image is a little off center, so I'll drag that. The height isn't that important. Uh, we're just really worrying about the width of it right now. So we'll get it about right there. So we can drag that back to the center, because that'll be the center of our model now. And then we can tab into edit mode, and you can see what I'm doing here. Let's turn that uh, image off again for the front view. There we go. Now that'll be a little easier. Grab the model, and we'll select the whole middle there, scale that on the x-axis until it meets roughly where that dummy object is. We'll drag that over to the next one. Put it about in the center. Grab that. This one was almost correct. So scale that on the x-axis a bit. There we go. Let's keep doing that, so on and so forth. That one's about right. That one's about right. And that one's about right now. So now let's work on the spacing between them. That looks about the same as the width. About the same. About the same. Okay, this one needs to come over just a little bit. So let's select the whole area there, and drag it over to the side. So there we go. So now if we come into side view, or perspective view, in the solid view, you can see that the grill is pretty well matched up now. Okay, so now what we need to do, turn on that image again, let's create a hole here for our headlight, our headlight beam. So what we need to do, um, let's bump our image over so we're not intersecting with that edge there. We're going to bump it over to the right just a bit. Let's try 0 0.05 now. And yeah, it looks about right. So let's grab this whole face area here. And I'm going to hit the E button to extrude. But I'm not going to move it anywhere. I'm just going to go ahead and click and let that in, and set that, set that in there as extra faces there. And you can tell if it's been extruded because you can now see face selections, those, those little dots in the middle of the faces. You can see those in the middle of all these edges, and that means that there's a face there. It's like it has zero width, but there's a face there. And you can tell because those, those dots are there, and that means that that's what it means. It means there's a face there. So now if I scale this, those faces that we just saw start moving. So I'm going to scale that down, and I'm going to kind of rearrange the edges of this new piece of mesh here until it kind of circles around that... Uh, the headlight part there. Now it won't be a perfect circle because we won't have enough vertices to really do that at this juncture. So we'll just kind of get it as close as we can, maybe. Just kind of get that. And then we can select this whole edge here and kind of see what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and turn that image off again. We've got the location uh, where it needs to go. So we can turn that off. And I'll tell you what we can do. Let's go ahead and select all of those guys. And I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to say delete the faces. So we're going to leave the the hole there. But what I'd like to do, let's go ahead and I'd like to delete those edges too. But I, I want to leave those vertices right there. So I'm going to hit uh, the delete and say edges. So now I still have those vertices in there. But what I want to do now is I'm going to put my 3D cursor right in the middle about where that would be. And let's count how many vertices we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to go Shift A and I'm going to add a circle and I'm going to give it 10 vertices. So now we'll have a perfect circle and I'm going to go ahead and scale it down a bit. About to right there. And we'll rotate that 90 degrees on the x-axis now. Go ahead and turn our image back on so I can see the scale of it and the position. Go ahead and put that in about right there. And go ahead and turn that back off. So now we have a perfect circle where the headlight should be. So what we need to do now 
is go through here and just merge all these vertices. So I'm going to say, actually, let's see. Let's select the vertex of the circle first and then the vertex of the surrounding uh, after that, just so we can have a nice solid order in which we're doing. So uh, the reason that's important is because now when we go Alt-M, it says, it says, which order do you want to merge that in? You want to merge the first one you selected, the last one in the middle, or the cursor is, or just collapse them all. So we want to say at first. So it's going to merge on that first vertex that we selected just then. So the same thing here, Alt-M, at first. At first, just go all the way around. And get that, oopsie, I think I selected the wrong one there. Alt M at first. There we go. And one more. There we go. So now we have a nice headlight that's pretty well uh, centered up. And if I select that loop there, I guess I guess now we'll have to add uh, the actual faces back in there since we deleted the edges there. That therefore deleted the faces. So to select the opposite sides, we'll just start filling in. The face is there, like so. Oops, gotta make sure you grab, oops, grab the right ones. There we go. Almost there, and there we go. Now, there looks like there might be an issue right here because uh, this is a four-sided mesh, but that's almost not quite enough to be considered a corner. It's like a, almost, it's like a 179 degree corner. So if we move down here, you'll see that that weirdness there. That means it's a non-uniform piece of mesh. That's it's not a correct four-sided piece. So let's undo that and let's grab this guy and move that down so we don't have to fuss with that. Now we're almost going to run into the same thing on this side. So what I'm going to do instead of trying to drag this one around or this one, I'm just going to grab that loop and let's just rotate it about like. So maybe maybe not quite so far because I started to see that issue start to take place up there. But let's uh, let's get it to where the the uh, sides are pretty straight and then the top and bottom are pretty well lined up. So there we go. Okay. So uh, let's we can go ahead and get rid of that dummy model now. Go ahead and delete that. And uh, if we look, that's kind of weird. I guess when it added that circle, it added it way back here. But that's easy to fix. So we'll tab into edit mode. Let's go to our side view, and uh, it's like the tunnel, <laughs> the tunnel of the headlight. Okay, so let's just grab all those just to make sure that they are S is Y zero. Now, uh, the hood's gonna jut out over them a little bit. So what we need to do, actually, I missed that bottom one. So let's do that again, S Y zero. So they're flat and lined up. Let's go ahead and move that in a little bit, so it matches up with the actual body of the 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 Jeep instead of the hood. And uh, if we tab back out, go into solid view, starting to get a little bit better looking there, isn't it? Now that uh, grill took quite a while to make. Um, I think I'm going to call that done for part three. In part four, uh, we'll try to go ahead and get in and start uh, adding the, uh, the actual interior space. We're not going to work on the seats or anything just yet. We're just going to go ahead and put that in there so it looks like a solid piece of vehicle. So we'll go ahead and save this as part three and go ahead and save that and like I said that's gonna be it for part three I'll see you in part four